hello again from me and Stan. She had to give me a tennis ball because he got very excited when I got home and getting my nails done. So that's what they look like currently. But when I upload this video, I would have been sober for a whole year, which is crazy to me. Um, so I thought I'd film a little video. Like I will do an Instagram post, but I feel like I won't be able to fit in everything I want to say on an Instagram caption. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and let's get into it. So, um, I really hope you calm down soon, but, um, yeah, I have been sober for a whole year. Um, I have done a couple of videos about why I went sober and stuff, but as a brief overview, I think I started drinking when I was about 16, like at house parties and things like that is quite common. I feel like in England, sort of where I grew up, like I live in quite a rural area. So the usual thing before you can go out anyways, you just have like house parties. So that's kind of where my drinking started. I was never a huge drinker. I definitely feel like I drank the most between the ages of like 16 and like 19. Like first year of uni, I probably drank like the heaviest. Just I think it's just part of the uni culture, like nights out, freshers week, all that thing. I did enjoy it at the time, but as I got older and I just went through more in life, I just felt like when I did drink more, I just felt worse. So yeah, this time last year I was going through a breakup. I'd lost my job. And there was just a lot going on and I thought every time I drank I just felt worse so I thought you know I'm gonna cut it out for a month and it's now nearly been a whole year and I still don't drink so yeah let's talk about my experiences in that year so as I said I went sober in the summer of 2023 uh, so sort of when things were like winding down I think it was like quite a nice time to start like there's no big events like Christmas or anything like that I did go to a family friend party thing, but my sort of get out of jail card was sort of, I said I was driving that night. So that was the first event I was a bit nervous to not be drinking for. Not because of who I was with, but more just like people asking why I wasn't drinking. But as soon as I said I'm driving, no one asked any more questions. So that was really, really nice. Um, and then, yeah, as the months went on, I was seeing friends. Like I would still go to the pub and just like not have a drink. And that was absolutely fine. Like my friends were really supportive of my decision. And I'm quite lucky in the sense my friends don't really drink that heavily either. So it didn't feel like a huge change in my social life to not be drinking. Like I'm not someone who goes out clubbing every week or anything like that. So when I do see my friends, it's normally like a pub trip or a meal or going out to see a show kind of thing. So I knew it wouldn't impact my social life hugely. I feel like I've got to put a dummy in him. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of the first initial stages. And I think... Probably the bit I was a little bit apprehensive about was actually Christmas time. Again, you've got work parties, you've got family, friend parties. And as I said, every year, me and my friends from home, we all go to the pub for Christmas for drinks. Um, so yeah, that was sort of like new experiences. Um, but I feel like in that time, I've done so much more socially, like sort of activity wise. So for example, like when I see my friends in London now, we don't just go for drinks, we go and see a show or... We go to concerts like for me i've always been a massive concert goer so now i don't drink that money goes towards concerts i think it's just so much more valuable um yeah so, so when i got to christmas and as i was navigating these sort of parties and social occasions again i think you think it's people are gonna have more of an issue with it than they do because i think especially in uk socializing society like drinking is quite a big part of it but you'll be quite surprised when you say you don't drink a lot of other people are like no i don't drink either or i only drink one or two and that's been quite reassuring. And again, when it came to like work Christmas parties, there's always at least one or two people driving anyway. Um, yeah, so I honestly really enjoyed Christmas, um, not drinking. And I think Christmas Day having like no drinks at all was definitely strange. But again, I just had alcohol free alternatives and I wasn't tired. Um, Cause I know Christmas is quite a busy time for me socially. So I normally find it quite overwhelming. And I'd always find when I drank, I never really got anxiety, but I got more like hang, hangs <laughs> like hangover depression that's how i felt i just felt really low and sad but i remember i had like five days worth of like socializing over the christmas period and doing that without alcohol adds so much more energy and i didn't feel so drained which was really really nice um so yeah definitely made me realize like i can enjoy socializing and sometimes i think it depends on the situation sometimes my social battery increases now i don't drink but other times i think especially in like clubbing high energy situations my social battery does dip more so i think it depends on who i'm with what i'm doing like how my social battery levels differ um yeah so that was christmas and the next thing was my birthday in february so again my first birthday in god knows how long that i didn't drink any alcohol and again i really enjoyed it i definitely booked in too many plans i think 
um, because I turned like 25 and I have sort of friends here, friends and family here, they're everywhere. So I did get quite, so, and I had like three concerts in the space of like two weeks. So there's just a lot going on in February. So I'm not gonna overbook myself next year. Um, but again, I went to an arcade in London, which was really fun, like an over 18s one. Uh, what else did I do for my birthday? I went pottery painting instead. Um, and I was quite anxious. I always just get anxious around my birthday. So just trying to fit everyone in. But like, I look back on that month, I was like, I did so much stuff, which I don't normally do because I wasn't drinking. Um, so yeah, that was really, really nice. Um, and then March, April time, I was a little bit stressed with work. But again, because I wasn't drinking, I didn't have that like layer of depression. And I think I look back now and I realised how sort of low alcohol made me. And the thing that used to affect the most as well was my sleep. Like if I had more than two glasses of wine or anything, like I just really didn't sleep well. I'd like either just be really dehydrated or I'd wake up throughout the night. Whereas now I know I can go to like a big night out and actually sleep well after. Obviously I'm a little bit tired the day after, but I don't feel that like depression or just that really strong fatigue that I did after drinking. Um, and then what else happened this year? So I think I want to talk about dating and being alcohol free because that was something I was really nervous about going sober because prior to this, all my first dates had been like alcoholic drinks. So I was thinking, oh my God, what the hell am I gonna do for a first date when I'm sober now? Um, but I think because I'd built up that kind of social stamina from not drinking in the few months before that, I sort of realised, I sort of learned what I like doing and how I sort of calm my nervous system. So for me, I think especially meeting a new person, I don't want to be just sat down in front of them anymore because I find that quite intimidating. Again, before if I had a drink in me, it didn't really bother me, but now I find it a bit overwhelming. So I've done a first date, I've done a walk on a first date, I've done a museum trip. What else have I done? And I did do drinks once. Uh, <laughs> with a first date but i've i've learned from that experience i'd rather not do that like i said i'd rather do a walk or an activity but i do feel like the risk with an activity you don't really get to know that person i feel like activities like mini golf and that are good for like the second third dates whereas a first date i do just want to talk but as i said i think just sitting down across the table from someone does can feel a little bit interview like and i noticed as well with one of the dates where they did drink i think they when their behavior changed after they started drinking I was like, this is not really for me. So I know not everyone is like that, but again, it makes you realize I think when you are sober on first dates, whether you like that person in front of you or not. Whereas I feel like before, when I went on a, on a date and I'd been drinking, I was like, oh my God, we had an amazing conversation. It went really, really well. And then a few days down the line, I was like, do you know what? I'm not actually sure about this person right now because I've got a clear head going into it. It does make me realize if we're compatible or not. So yeah, I'm still very much single. I've done three hinge dates. That's enough for me this year. <laughs> But again, I'm learning what I like, what I don't like, and I said, what makes me feel more comfortable. So yeah, I'm glad I have sort of put myself out there. Um, so yeah, that was sort of May, June. And I also went to my first wedding sober, which again, I thought would be people would ask more questions, but honestly, people do not care as much as you think they do. <laughs> I think especially with the wedding, like all the focus is on the bride and the groom kind of thing. And I thought I was gonna be driving the whole weekend, but in the end I didn't, because um, my uncle was a taxi driver, so he had a big old taxi, he could take us there and back. And again, I just, instead of a lemon, instead of a, um, so I was kind of a bit worried, you know, like at a champagne reception, that would be like the only thing where I'd look really weird not drinking champagne. But you look around the room, there's going to be at least five or six other people not drinking or drinking an alter alternative. Um, and it's absolutely fine. Again, I think in those situations, you've got to remember there's so many other people around you, not everyone's going to notice you're not drinking. So I find that quite reassuring. So again, that wedding, I just drank lemonade pretty much the whole night. Um, I also went wine tasting, funnily enough, <laughs> as a sober person, because me and my brother booked this for my mum. Well, we got her a voucher like over a year ago before I went sober. Um, and then it was like running out in May. We're like, we're going to use this um, thing. And I was like, I don't drink anymore. So me and my brother went with my mum and it was actually really lovely. Like, we did a, uh, we went to Denby's Wine Estate in Dorking, which was really, really lovely. Um, like beautiful scenery. And we did do a wine tour. So again, they gave you a Prosecco when you went in to watch a film. Um, but again, I just gave that glass to my brother. Like, I think things like that, if you can pass your drink to someone, that does make life a bit easier. And then as we were going around sort of the um, winery, my mum did ask, well, do you do alcohol-free alcohol -free wine? And the woman just looked like so offended. I was like, oh my God. Like I said, sometimes I feel more comfortable just not saying anything. Um, but again, we went into like the wine cellar and she still kept giving me drinks. But again, I just gave it to my mum and my brother, who I think quite enjoyed it. <laughs> they were like, we feel really pissed now because obviously they were drinking like three of my drinks as well. Um, but then we went upstairs and had lunch in this like beautiful restaurant which overlooked the whole vineyard and it was just it was one of the best lunches I've ever had just the whole experience so 
even though it's a place you just associate with drinking i took away so much from it and we went for a walk around the vineyard after so don't let activities which are centered around alcohol like put you off like i feel sorry the dog's cleaning himself now um i feel like sometimes people who go sober might just avoid any activities to do with alcohol because I mean, I understand you've got like a history of addiction, like completely valid, but if you're someone who's just chosen to go sober for lifestyle reasons, mental health reasons, like don't avoid all social activities because you can do them without alcohol. Like some of my favorite um, alcohol free alternatives, like ginger beer is always in like bars and pubs. Um, like I went on May bank holiday, me and my friends went on Tacney for a sort of, well, it wasn't a night out, it was like a, it was from like 12 to 7 p.m. But again, it was really good. What I took from that experience is that there was like a dance floor, but there was also like a room with like games and stuff. So I really got involved with like Jenga and like beer pong. Again, you can play beer pong without the drink, like, and it's still fun. Um, so yeah, I think if you just kind of think outside the box when it comes to seeing of mates, like you should be able to find activities which are fun, but you can still socialize and things like that. Um, yeah, and obviously this is my first like full summer completely sober. I went to Brighton Pride at the weekend, which you might think is a lot of drinking stuff. But again, going there this year completely sober, I noticed so much representation for the sober community, which was really nice. Like again, in the in the parade, there was a gay and sober, um, not society, but a gay and sober uh, organisation that were promoting themselves. When I got into the Fabuloso event, which is like the festival area, um there was a sober dance tent there was a massive like coke stand which was just serving like coke, um cans of coke and there was like, a little dance floor there's a photo booth and there's games so we all kind of got involved in the sober stuff as well which was really nice um and again like i saved so much money that weekend because i didn't even buy any drinks whilst i was in there like you're allowed to bring in sort of empty water bottles so i just kept refilling that all night i mean the food was extortionate but <laughs> the actual event um yeah like it really didn't matter if you didn't drink which was really good fun. Um, and then, yeah, again, sort of the night before we did games night, I just got myself a bottle of like alcohol-free sparkling wine. I really enjoyed that. And I think it does help when you're in social situations, if you feel a bit self-conscious of drinking water, like maybe just get an alcohol-free alternative and put it in a wine glass or like a beer glass. It just makes you feel a bit more a part of things. Which brings me on to, I have got such a generous gift to show you. Um, like, I, I didn't know when this was coming, but I thought, it would time nicely with this video. So the brand No Seco reached out to me. This is not paid for or anything, but they have gifted me this item. Uh, no Seco reached out to me um, because I obviously talk a lot about being sober online and they have asked me to um, answer a few questions about being sober, sort of in my twenties and stuff. And that's gonna be posted on their Instagram at the end of August. And they said, we'll send you something for like what you've done for us. I was like, oh, that's really kind, thank you. And this massive box turned up today. Like, I just honestly can't believe it um with like a whole selection of their alcohol free drinks so this is one of the first sort of um sober alcohol free alternative brands i discovered so this is their original no seco so it's alcohol free prosecco it honestly tastes exactly the same like even my mum who does pref like prefer to drink alcohol she says this tastes exactly the same and also the waitress and tesco versions are really nice too um, so yeah, this is uh, the No Seco uh, fine sparkling suitable for vegans and it's completely alcohol free um, because I know there is a little bit of like debate around sort of 0 0.5, 0 0.05, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but I'll just show you the rest of what is in this package. Um, and then I got the Rose uh, Fine Sparkling No Seco, which this is really nice as well, again, really nice on a hot day. Um, and I feel like these are really good to bring with you to like um, if someone's having like a family barbecue or you're going to a dinner party, this is just easy to bring. Like, because I have sort of made like alcohol free mocktails, but they just it's just like a lot of different drinks to like if you somebody just want to open the um fridge and just like pour yourself a drink and these are perfect for that this is i've never seen this before this is the no seco spritz which i realize now is like the alternative to um an aperol spritz now when i did drink i didn't particularly like aperol spritz so i'm interested to see if i would like the like non-alcohol version and then i've also got a peach bellini again i used to have a bellini when i was drinking so i'm really excited to try this and then I also just got two more bottles of, or, yeah, one more bottle each of the uh, original No Seco and the original Rosé. So that will definitely keep me going to the end of summer. So thank you, No Seco, if you are watching this video. But yeah, I wanted to talk about 0.5% drinks and 0.05% drinks because in certain countries they still class those as having alcohol in, but I think in the UK they don't. And I actually read somewhere since going sober, um, certainly. <laughs> Oh, he's found a wrapper of some kind. 
Um, since going sober, I have found um, out that apparently like certain foods have like 0.5% alcohol, like bananas. But the 0.5% that doesn't actually absorb into your bloodstream that much to like have an impact on you. So when I do see those drinks, I do normally give them a go. Like at the wedding weekend, I had, I think it was from m &S, it was like a, a pink porn star martini type thing, which was like, it was in the low alcohol range, but it was 0.5%, which is it's literally nothing. When I drink it, I don't feel any impact of it on me. Um, and again, the 0.05 drinks, um, I actually spoke to my cousin about this, who's a doctor. And when she's pregnant, she doesn't drink any of those sort of drinks because there is there is a low alcohol amount in them. But she goes, a lot of the time, things like this, I mean, this does say zero alcohol, but I will double check. You can always see on the back of the bottle that it says like 0 0.05. But as I said, there is no like ABV uh, units in there. So this is completely alcohol free, which is amazing if you're pregnant or anything. Um, but yeah, she did say there is a lot of drinks that are marketed as like no alcohol, but they still have zero 0.5 or 0 0.05 says so that it is a really low amount but if you are going sober for medical reasons obviously check with your doctor but i did find that quite interesting from my cousin um that some drinks promote being zero alcohol free when they're actually not so yeah just be really careful um but yeah that's kind of my sobriety update and as i said a year on i could not believe that <laughs> if i told kira a year ago i'd be gifted like six bottles of alcohol free drink for going sober she would be so shocked and I've worked with them. Um, well, I didn't work with Caruse. Caruse is a brand by Steph Ellswood, who's quite big on Instagram. I made a mocktail using her um, uplift drink and she reposted it, which was really nice. And I love the Sober Girl community on Instagram and TikTok. Um, Millie does so many like really good series of like fun things to do in London, which are alcohol free. So I've been to like, a new art exhibition because of that. Um, I've done something else as well because of the Sober Girl Society and the book is amazing again touched on like dating, friendships and stuff going sober. So yeah, those are things I'd really recommend if you're embarking on a sobriety journey. But yeah, I don't feel like I would go back to alcohol, like just not at this point in my life. I did sort of say maybe on my wedding day, if there's champagne, I might have a glass of that. But again, if this still is knocking around on my wedding day, I will just drink this. Like I said, I don't really miss alcohol. The only thing I maybe miss is like, I feel like alcohol free still wine is just not quite the same as alcoholic wine, but Again, there's so many other great alternatives as I've shown you in this um, video. And again, I love the Fun King cocktails. They do a really nice porn star martini in the can again. It's just really easy to open it and pour it into a pretty glass and it just looks like a normal cocktail. It's actually what they use for a mixer for um, in most restaurants anyway. Um, but obviously if no, in a restaurant they'd add vodka to it and stuff. But yeah, the, those are really easy to buy in supermarkets. There's so many like alcohol-free beers. I never really liked beer before I went sober, so I don't like it now. Um, and like G&Ts, there's loads of alcohol-free versions of that. Um, so yeah, it's almost like exciting games. Like, you know when you do start drinking alcohol, you find what drink you like and don't like. It's almost the same when, when you go sober too. Um, so yeah, I think definitely look at it as something to look forward to rather than something that is scary or like unknown because you all reap the rewards of going sober, even if you just try it for a month, six months, whatever. Um, but there's so many like amazing sober creators, like on TikTok, I love watching Callie Thompson's uh, journey and um, Ufi's journey. So yeah, I will link all these people down below and Catherine Gray is an amazing creator to follow as well about sobriety. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it made a bit of sense. There was literally no plan coming into it, but yeah, that's where I'm at now with my sobriety journey. Um, I can do another updates in a year's time if you want me to. Um, but yeah, as I said, I've literally faced no judgment at all. I mean, obviously get good coming like, if you don't want one drink, and I'm like, no, I'm absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, everyone who I've come into contact with, like it really doesn't bother them if I drink or don't drink. So yeah, definitely try not to overthink the judgment part of it. Um, and if people do judge you, they don't belong in your life either. So yeah, <laughs> please like and subscribe if you like this video. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.